and operas. You've more than likely enjoyed him on the soundtracks of many of your favorite movies. And he's found numerous solo and small ensemble recordings. This performance is pre-recorded, which allows Roger to be with us online. He can therefore respond to your pings down in the chat button below with your questions or reminders of mischief together in college days. I won't delay any further. What you've come for, here is our accomplished banana slug, Roger LeBeau. Thank you for being here. Uh, I will say this evening, but this is a Thursday morning uh, in Southern California. It was, it's one of the 17 days uh, in Southern California where it is uh, overcast outside, uh, so it is a significant event. Uh, I'm going to be playing two pieces for you today. The first is a suite uh, by Johann Sebastian Bach, one of the six suites that are uh, chapter and verse to every cellist. This is the D minor suite, the second. It is in six movements. The first is a prelude, and then I'll announce the other movements as we go along. <laughs> Thank you. 
Alamand. <laughs> Courant. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you. 
minuets. always wanted to say this, the jig is up.
Uh, thanks to Zoom, I, I couldn't hear the, the deafening ovation after the Bach. Uh, but it's deafening. I, I wouldn't want to hear it. Uh, the second and last piece I'm going to play for you is uh, a, a brief choro. A choro is a popular song uh, from Brazil. And this particular one was written by a very well-known uh, composer and, uh, and performer of the 1930s and 40s, who's known simply by his, uh, his name, Pichinguinha. I don't know what his full name is. I did once, but I've forgotten it. Uh, uh, it's like uh, soccer players and, and, and composers in Brazil all go by a single name. So uh, uh, this piece is called Cariñoso, and uh, it goes something like this. <laughs> Thank you. And thank you, Roger, for this lovely musical gift. Thank you, fellow slugs, for joining us. Please applaud Roger in the chat box below. And also, Roger will be taking a few questions in a moment. So if you have a question to pose, please also put your desire to pose a question in chat and I will call on you in turn. While you're signing up, a note, please. Among UCSC's current students are blossoming talents who want to follow Roger LeBeau's path. 
but are hindered by the high costs of attending UCSC. The state no longer pays the big fraction of university costs that it did when Roger and I attended, so it's now expensive. Please consider aiding these students by contributing to a scholarship fund. For example, the Alumni Council has one, or you can find 19 funds devoted to music students by going online. See the crowdfunding page that is in the chat box below. Barbara just put it up. Also, if you're interested in volunteering, please email us at alumni at ucsc.edu. That's alumni at ucsc.edu. Okay. So do we have any questions? You can also just speak up. I'm Joe, class of 05. Is there uh, a favorite piece of Bach or classical music you have? And if so, did you learn it at UCSC? Uh, well, the six Charles Sweets, uh, I started uh, abusing those at an early age. And uh, when I did go to Santa Cruz, I was studying with an extraordinary guy named, uh, let me see, start my video. Okay, uh, I will start my video. What, you don't want to look at the goat? Oh, there we go. Uh, uh, so to answer your question, uh, yeah, um, uh, there was a, a, a teacher, uh, William Vandenberg, who taught at UCSC. And he had originally been uh, principal cello for the Philadelphia Orchestra under Leopold Stokowski. And he'd also studied before that with Pablo Casals and Giran Alexanian. And uh, for Stokowski, he was also the assistant conductor. So he would go out into the hall and, and tell Stokowski how that the trumpets were too loud. Now, if you are a conductor and you need to be told that the trumpets are too loud, you're in the wrong business. Anyway, I'm, I, I, uh, I digress. But uh, uh, to get back to your question, uh, I worked on that very sweet with uh, Willie Vandenberg uh, and uh, a lot else besides. Uh, so uh, I asked uh, to my favorite Bach, uh, favorite Bach for cello, it's, it's whatever sweet I'm playing. But if it were Bach himself, you have to go with the St. Matthew Passion, the B minor Mass, uh, a certain number of the sacred cantatas, uh, all of which uh, are in contention for greatest of all time. Thank you. Thanks for listening. David had mentioned that uh, uh, it, it was inexpensive to go to Santa Cruz. Uh, when I when I was a boy, uh, I got there in 1967. There was no tuition uh, for the whole time that I was there, and the there were uh, uh, class fees, different uh, incidental fees that totaled uh, 100 or so a year. Until by the time I left, it was probably 500 dollars for the year in 1971. So we realized we're in different times altogether. Yeah, well, the ROI on investing you was quite high. I have to, uh, I have to say. So they did well. They sh they should do better now. Yeah. Who who was the biggest influence on you as a as a young man musically? Uh, Gregor Piatigorsky, uh, the great Russian cellist who uh, moved to this country in, uh, in the early '30s. Uh, and he had a great uh, impact on me. First of all, as a kid, he had moved to, to Los Angeles. So I got to hear him a few times um, in concert in LA. But I also studied, my first important teacher was his teaching assistant at, at USC, Lawrence Lesser. And I studied with Larry for, uh, for two years when I was in high school. And then again, after I graduated from uh, 
forgive my saying this, University of Southern California, uh, where I went to grad school. And, uh, and, and then after that, I, my uh, Larry Lesser called Kedogorski and asked him if I could uh, sit in his master class, which I did. And, and so that, that was the last master class that he ever gave. And uh, that, that year long, uh, twice a week master classes. So he, he was the most important, I would say. Yeah. So, so uh, mic is open if somebody has a question. They probably want to know my lawyer's name. <laughs> All right, to sign you up for another million dollar contract. Yeah, well, I was thinking probably to sue me for crimes against art. But uh, <laughs> well, I, I, uh, I think probably people have flown the coop by now, but uh, I was very heartened when I looked at the chat. I saw that uh, uh, there were people uh, uh, who were listening who I had not seen in 50 years. Uh, Christine Beckstrom, I don't know if you're there, uh, but uh, I remember you very fondly from uh, from the uh, Santa Cruz <laughs> Symphony, uh, from the, uh, uh, the the orchestra. And, um, yes, uh, I'm I'm listening and uh, and and have enjoyed your concert this evening immensely. Yes, Christine, I have the fondest memories of you. Uh, the one of the, the best things you ever did is. Um, there was something that we were up in arms about. I don't know if it was the People's Park thing or if it was the bombing at Cambodia, but the orchestra wanted to come up with a resolution and say that to a um, member, we were in opposition to this. And you, I believe uh, your, your family perhaps had been, uh, uh, had been in military, but for whatever reason, you, your convictions were not that. And you were very, I mean, the, we were uh, an un ungodly rabble, and uh, and I I think of your your quiet dignity in that uh, sometimes, and I I really admired you for that. <laughs> <clears throat> oh my my goodness, that's such a long time ago. <laughs> it, I, for, I totally forgot about that. Yes, okay, well, um, <clears throat> succeeded in other things and along the way, I'm re a retired string specialist from the public schools and I've been maintaining a private studio teaching violin, viola and yes, indeed, uh, cello. And mm -hmm. um, so, yes, I've taught thousands of children and I continue to teach and have weekly sessions with um, music colleagues and we're working our way through all the <clears throat> um, major um, string quartets of the, you know, <clears throat> Mozart, um, Haydn, Beethoven, Mendelssohn, yes. So we're, we've been going through those for about five years now. So I intend to die with my boots on. <laughs> Let's not speak of that. But uh, yeah, that's, that is so lovely to hear. I and mean, that is a, a life well lived. Uh, well, th thank you so much, Roger. Delightful to see you and hear you play so beautifully. It's great to talk to you too. So we have we have Don, I believe, who has a question as well. Don, who I haven't spoken to forever, but we correspond through uh, through uh, Facebook. Are you there? Konnichiwa. Check your mute, Don. Okay, so he he asks. What's a piece that you love to play, even if you don't perform it in public? Not even in a subway. By the way, he is found on YouTube playing on Box Birthday on the LAS Union Station subway. So what, what wouldn't you play in public but love to play otherwise? Well, uh, there is a large catalog. Which is, is a, there a lot of the concertos that I most love are too difficult for me to play in public. And uh, for example, the Schumann Concerto, I would no longer play that uh, in public. I have performed it before. Uh, you know, I won't, there's no concerto I will play ever again. Let's put it that way. My 
concerto days are well be behind me. So that yeah, there's a lot of stuff. And the the Kodai so, solo sonata, you know, that's a a piece that it's this is for younger, more competent uh, uh, competent uh, players than I. So it's a big catalog. James, you have a question? Go ahead. If you unmute yourself, you should be able to pose it. Okay. Uh, James uh, wanted to ask, have you had the opportunity oh, I to got play it. chip? There we go. Go. I, I got it now. I just posted whether you've had the opportunity to play cello at Gamble House, where you've been a volunteer. So how do the acoustics compare to those at home? We haven't. We were going to. Hi, James. Uh, uh, I, I saw that you were there. And, uh, uh, yes, I'm glad. Uh, well, no, I haven't played there. Uh, uh, one of the other docents, the one who got me involved uh, with being a volunteer, was uh, is herself a, a great cellist, and uh, and we we prepared a concert that we were going to do uh, online. Oh, there. You go. And uh, and and so. Uh, 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 yeah, we were going to do that, but then we got sidetracked with between one thing and another, uh, you know, just the appalling uh, way of life these days. So we never got around to that. We may still. All, all is well up north? Well, pretty well as it goes. Have the shots. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah. Okay, any further questions? Um, I have a question, David. Uh, April. <laughs> um, hi, Roger. D thank you so much for sharing your talent with us. Um, do you enjoy playing solo more, or do you also play with any um, orchestras? Well, these days I, I, I've uh, retired from from pretty much everything, so I, I only play solo in in chamber music, and I haven't played any chamber music in over a year since lockdown. And I'm getting together in early May with some other uh, geezers who are um, uh, vaccinated, and we're going to play string quartets. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. But you know, string quartets and so on, that's all I do these days. And it's, it's a, a great, nourishing thing. Uh, but um, I played for many years for Los Angeles Opera, uh, over 30 years for the opera. Uh, subbed, uh, you know, with Philharmonic occasionally, and I played a lot of studio music, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, scoring, a lot of scores for a lot of uh, movies. So it's, I have to say, it's really quite uh, wonderful uh, to, uh, to to be released from that. And I see a former student who was listening, Eli Kaner. Uh, pipes up and says, where do I sign up to become a geezer? And uh, Eli, you have to study for that assiduously. Have you listened to nothing that I've ever taught you? So uh, if you, just stay with it and you two will become soft brains and opinionated and overbearing. So I guess I have to ask a question to follow up on that. You're saying that the playing for scores uh, for films uh, isn't that fun. What 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 is cumbers? You know, what's the difficulty? Sounds sounds exciting to me as an amateur, as somebody not in the field. Well, uh, it's you know I, I think it goes without saying that no matter what any of us does uh, professionally, that there are going to be aspects to it that are are annoying. And, and a lot of people think that playing for movie soundtracks would be really terrific. I mean, you're working very often with uh, people like John Williams and Old Sylvester, yeah, Randy Newman. Randy Newman, there's no such thing as a bad Randy Newman session. Those are always super, uh, super entertaining. And I, I don't know that I can tell you any Randy Newman stories because this is PG. But in any case, uh, that's a lot of fun. But most of the time, it is, um, it's pretty tedious because the way it t tends to go is you are recording a snippet of music that lasts between, uh, you know, 20 seconds and 
four or five minutes sometimes. Uh, and and it's not an, usually the orchestra reads it down and then um, um, it's perfect. It sounds wonderful. But then you've got a lot of people back in the booth who uh, need to justify the fact that they're pulling down uh, tens of, of thousands of dollars a minute for their uh, contributions. And so they have to make themselves uh, extremely uh, important. And so you end up re changing a note here and then changing it back and then doing this and that. So and you can end up spending uh, an hour on a minute long clip. You can. <laughs> Sorry, I have allergies. Uh, you can spend longer, <laughs> longer than an hour. So uh, it it gets tedious. And uh, but look, uh, the it's uh, as they say, the check does not bounce. So I'm very. Well, this was marvelous. Thank you very much, uh, Roger. And thank you, fellow slugs, for joining us. Good night. Thanks, everybody, for your, for your patience. Thank you, Dave. Any other, no. tips for, any other tips for young musicians? Oh, practice on days that end with a Y. <laughs> <laughs> My uh, wife likes that. <laughs> That would probably help my golf game too. It would make you happier. <laughs> All right. Thank you again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Roger. Bye. Thanks, Barbara. Thank you.